Hello, hello everyone. Uh, Dr. John Alfredson here and uh, today is day 56 of the uh, Techademics 90 Day Ecom Challenge and um, I'm going to be your host and uh, this is a pre-recorded video so unfortunately you cannot ask any questions but we're going to do a training today on uh, uh, some different subjects but first let me introduce myself if you haven't heard uh, me speak uh, with or do anything with Techademics until now. So my name is John Alfredson and um, I've been, um, I'm originally from Sweden. I live in California right now. I've been working with Techademics since they started and I one of Techademics uh, uh, trainers and coaches in Ecom. Um, I ha started, uh, my background is in, in engineering. I have a like, um, PhD in electrical engineering from 2008, but I get so tired of that. I actually lost my passion for that. So I started looking for something else back in 2008 and I found the online marketing world. So that's how I got involved in, in the entrepreneur world to become an entrepreneur and um, start learning how to build a business online. But it was a long, long, long journey coming from an engineering background, going into marketing. And uh, I learned a lot of different, uh, uh, well, I went to a lot of different trainings, a lot, a lot, a lot of, a lot of different strategies, methods, things like that for, for advertising, for blogging, for, for um, writing uh, eBooks and and uh, selling on Amazon. And I've been doing going through a lot of trainings, creating iPhone apps, you name it. I probably tried it at some point, different types of of training in the online world. But it was back in, <clears throat> back in 2015, I got my first. Uh, uh, success with with ecom. I went into ecom because Chris Record promoted this course in how to in Shopify and how to do how to build your build up your own Shopify store. So I decided to sign up for that and I built my store in two weeks. <clears throat> but that, this was back in November. This was right before I launched it right before Thanksgiving in November twenty third of two thousand fifteen. And the first day I had maybe I had ten or ten to fifteen products in my store. And um, I launched my first ads. I launched ads for eight different products, eight different ads, and I got two sales the first day. So I was that got me really excited because I got the sales when I, I mean, I launched the ad in the morning. I just didn't touch them. I let them run, and then all of a sudden the sales come in. So that was really exciting. To know that I could create, make sales on autopilot. Don't have to be by the computer to make the sales. I have, don't have to talk to anyone. I could just drive the traffic through Facebook ads. So I knew that this was working. So it was really exciting. So next day, second day. Uh, I decided to scale up a little bit. I let the let the ads run. I focused and I, I I launched a couple of more ads and I got nine sales and it was mostly from my, just one or maybe two ads the ad sets that gave me the three, all the sales. Um, so okay, this is working well. So maybe I have a winner here. So day three, I continued to increase the budgets a little bit and and increase my ad spend and uh, so day two was about hundred dollars in sales. So day three. Uh, I get, managed to get up to three hundred dollars in sales, so I was really, really, wow! This is really working. And day three was day before Thanksgiving, so day four was Thanksgiving. It was Thursday, and I managed to get almost a thousand dollars in sales. So this was pretty crazy. I was super excited. I got a lot of orders. I was doing free plus shipping, uh, but uh, th th all of my products were free plus shipping because that's how I started out and. Well, I decided I want to scale this as, as much as I can. So I just decided to duplicate ad sets and I created a lot, raised my budgets and I did a lot of di different things. I uh, tried a lot of different things that were that I was taught back then. And uh, I managed to scale up to day five, $2,000. And day six, I got up to $4,000 in sales. And then, well, after my first week, I had over $13,000 in sales and a thousand, almost a thousand orders in seven days so that was a little bit crazy and uh, yeah uh, well I had to pause my ads because it was right after right before Christmas I wanted to make sure everyone got their orders before Christmas I didn't know have anyone to help me fulfill other than my my wife and, and uh, some family members so I didn't needed just needed to find a virtual assistant to help me out so I paused my ads for a couple of days three or four days found a virtual assistant that could help me with order fulfillment and, and customer support. And uh, then I turn on my ads again. And my first month I made $65,000 in sales. It was like crazy. 
and it just went up from there and uh, yeah sales have been uh, yeah going my store has been running over one and a half year right now and I made um, 650,000 over 650,000 in sales so it's been been a really really fun journey and uh, well with a lots of ups and downs because products has there, there are also challenges along the way but I'm not going to go into that right now I just want to jump into the training I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my background and I hope that can inspire you a little bit so <clears throat> right now today we're going to go in um, to talk about the ads manager versus the power editor and I'm going to go in and show you the uh, the differences and how I use the power editor how I use the ads manager I'm going to create an ad campaign from scratch for a product with the ad set well, the campaign, the ad set, and the ad, and we're gonna go over how to set up the image ad, uh, put, uh, well, image ads, video ads, and also talk a little bit about the different types of ads, the page post ads versus the other types of ads, and so on, dark posts versus visible posts, and so on. Uh, that's what the plan is for this training, for the rest of this training. So um, let's jump into let's jump into the training right away. <clears throat> Let's go into Ads Manager first. So I'm here in my um, one of my Facebook accounts, uh, a dummy account that I, I do not use, but I use it for trainings. So in here in the Ads Manager, so you probably know already how the Ads Manager is built up because you should be running ads. But by, by this point, there are a lot of different um, trainings. Uh, we are on day, day 56 obviously so there are a lot of trainings before you've had already so you're probably you're probably familiar with the ads manager you should be and uh, we have the campaign section of course and then we have the ad sets and we have the ads and uh, that's the hierarchy of uh, of uh, the Facebook ads and I I do it like this that I launch one campaign per product so I have for every every product that I want to promote I launch a new campaign and then I have multiple ad sets under each campaign and then I usually only have one ad under each ad set so one uh, one campaign per product uh, I have multiple ad sets under each campaign and then one, uh, one just one ad under each ad set so a little disclaimer there one campaign per, per product that means depending on the objective of the campaign because sometimes you want to have a page post engagement campaign and a website conversion campaign and you can't have th those are two different objectives so you need to create two different campaigns for that for the same if you want to do run them both for the same product but the, but usually if you're only running conversion ads you for example a website conversion ad I run all my Ad sets under the same campaign for the conversion ads so all my view content and purchase conversions and add to cart conversion ads sets are all under the same campaign for the product i hope that makes sense so um so the campaign level we have here and then we have the ad set level like here like i said and then we have the ads here so i don't know how many of you that have uh, use the power editor but the power editor is built in the same way as the ads manager looks looks very similar right now right now it used to look look, look a little bit different but let's go into the power editor you get the power editor here you click on the menu and you click on the power editor here so oops so here we have power editor and uh, the power editor as well we have the campaign level we have the we have the ad set level and we have the ads so the difference here in the with the well there are a few differences with the power editor versus the ads manager so and this is how i use it so the power editor you can see all the stats and performances of the the campaign and the ad sets and all that uh here to the right you see they have the performance we have the overview here and you have a lot a lot a lot of different stats we can scroll to the right here but the thing is it's not that easy to control all the columns here you can you can you can change a little bit here in the list settings, but but it's um, uh, summary and, and the columns that you want to show. And so, but you, you don't have the flexibility. I'm not going to change anything here. You don't have the flexibility. For example, if you want to add the add in the website conversion parts that we want to look at for for the ecom ads, 
we want to see how much how many sales we've gotten from the pixel and so on and you can't use that for, with the power editor so that's why i'm liking to look at when i'm looking at my stats i don't look a lot in the power editor i look in the ads manager because the ads manager let's go to the ads manager again so the ads manager has all the stats and we can customize the columns here and there are other training <clears throat> in the in this 90 day challenge that shows you how to do that <clears throat> excuse me so let's go back into the uh, power editor and um, another difference with the power editor is when you're making changes to to campaigns ad sets or ads anytime you're making changes they're not instantly live so so you can make multiple changes before before you up uh, before they will oh, well, as many as you want before you basically upload them to Facebook and all of them go live at the same at the same time <clears throat> so all the changes that you're you're making to the ad sets and ads and campaigns in the power editor before you upload them they are all saved on your locally on your computer until you decide to upload them and if you're making changes to an ad set or, or a campaign in the ads manager the change uh, goes into effect immediately so that's also a difference <clears throat> and uh, the important thing here with the the uh, within the power editor yeah as like i said you have the campaign the ad set and the ads uh, those are the, the the tabs here that you're going to click on a lot in between and then the search bar uh, the search feature which where you can search campaigns or ad sets so you can sort out only certain different campaigns uh, and ad sets and so on and filters filters can show on, you can show only active campaigns only inactive only uh, completed not delivering and so on whatever you choose to so the filters in search can be really good to basically get a better overview of the actual ads because once you have hundreds of campaigns and ad sets uh, they're all going to be listed here and it's going to be a little bit harder to, f to find the ones that you're actually looking for. So then the search function and the filter function is really valuable. <clears throat> and up here to the right, we have the stats, the, 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 the days stats. So what I want to say about this is, uh, yeah, basically uh, the one, the stat, you set the date range and any date range you set there that will be reflected here in the stats uh, section here so so if we choose the last seven days that will be the la the sales or well all the stats for the last seven days and <clears throat> what should be noted though is that the last seven days does not include today so if so sometimes if you launch a new campaign uh, today and uh, you want to look at the stats later today and you go into the power editor or ads manager it's, just, it's just, it works the same way so you click on the last seven days and click on update and you see zero like this nothing not sure nothing at all so that means that you might not be looking at today's date so because you're choosing this last seven days so in order to see the today sales for today or the stats for today you also need to include that so you can set the date range whatever you want here but if you, you need to include today if you're going to see today's stats and sometimes a lot of people could miss that all right, so that's it about the how the um, the power editor is built built up. It's not that, not not more difficult than than the ads manager actually. So it's it's not much harder to work with. I think it's actually easier. The power editor. I mean, I use the ads manager to look at the stats and and look at my data for my campaigns. But then I use the power editor to create the campaigns and to create the ad sets and, and also duplicate campaigns and ad sets because that's the good feature with the power editor that can easily duplicate mass duplicate ad sets and campaigns and, and do mass changes to a lot of them at the same time so those are some of the best features uh, of the power editor what we're going to do now is uh, that we're going to dive into uh, <clears throat> creating a uh, and campaign an ad set and and uh, an ad so we'll, yeah so this was the ads manager versus the power editor so now we're going to go into create campaigns ad set uh, uh, um, how to create campaigns and create ad sets and ads so let's go in and do that <clears throat> and we're gonna gonna do this from the power editor so first we need to to decide what kind of 
product we're going to promote. So I have a, I have a page uh, called Biker Jewelry Store, which is a template store page that I used for trainings. And um, so we're going to promote a product for, for biker, a biker jewelry product. I'm going to create an ad for that as an example. And uh, so this is the page for that. And uh, let's go back into, let's go to AliExpress first and, and find a product to promote. So AliExpress, we're gonna go, how do I say motorcycle necklace is what I wanna search for. Let's, uh, let's see what we can find. We have 907 results, okay. So let's see what we got here. We got a few of them. Hmm. Well, it looks nice. Uh, there are a few nice here ones here. So I click sort uh, first. I look at the best match, and I look at the ones that comes up, see if them, something is standing out, stands out, and then I click on orders uh, to sort by the, the ones with most number of orders. So this one has 500 sales, which is a good sign. 200 sales, 90 sales. So let's see. I want to promote something that stands out. So let's choose this one, the motorcycle. Let's look at this motorcycle, auto bike, and a animal crystal rhinestone necklace for women. Okay. Well, this is for women as well. So the, my biker jewelry store page is for women. So that's good. So and this seller has four diamonds. So that's good. They have a good, a lot of feedback, 6,206 uh, feedback score. Great, this has sold a few, not a lot, so but that doesn't mean that it's um, it's not a good product, that it can sell well. Three dollars, so we can might be able to do it as a free plus shipping item. Let's click in and look at that. So, so we have ePacket with this. I go in here and look. United States, yes, we have ePacket, $1.37. Okay, that's good. Let's look for other countries too, in case we wanna sell it to Canada. Canada, we have e-packet, yeah, $2.63, that's good. I'm gonna look at for other, Australia, e-packet, yeah, $2.63. Uh, that's good, good to know in case we wanna expand uh, um, later, so try to other countries. Also United Kingdom, $2.63, okay, good. So let's go with the United States for now. And the e-packet, $1.37, okay, so the price is gonna be four, total price is gonna be $4.35, to sell, to ship this. So it's 298 plus 137. And it's gonna ship within 12 to 20 days with the package, that's good. So the only drawback here though, the quantity is there's only 20 pieces available. So this is something you wanna look at when you're finding your product so that you make sure they have enough available. You can contact the seller. If you, I wanna contact the seller, I go here up into the store uh, information here I can click on contact now or and I can contact the seller and ask a question I'm not gonna do that right now but <clears throat> that's one way to do it to see if they have more in stock or if they can get more quickly if you start selling these uh, the next thing I do I look at also look at the feedback so this is only five star feedback 33 votes so that's good you can also go and click on the feedback here if you want to uh, they have eight five stars in the here and you can see the actual the product in use uh, Some people have it Let's have a, taken their own photos to see it come shipped in a little plastic bag and um, looks nice and um, Everything is fine. Yeah, so here's what there's other people are saying how long it's gonna take and but mo a lot of these people are not using ePacket You can see what sh shipping method they're using so ePacket is gonna be the fastest one um, okay, good. And then we go and look at the product <clears throat> details. So let's scroll down to see what the, what else here. Yeah. So they have a few images here. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use these images. I'm gonna save down these images to my computer so we can use them for advertising. So I save down all of, all these images. <clears throat> By just if on a PC, I can just right click on them on Mac. You can just drag them here from here, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> and then um, let's go into the power editor. Now we're going to create the 
campaign for this motorcycle necklace. So first click on the campaign tab and then go into create campaign. So uh, when I create my campaigns, I have a naming convention. I'm just going to tell you briefly about how my naming convention is right now. So uh, as a campaign name, I just give the store name or a short abbreviation for the store name. Store name. And then uh, I, what type of product it is. So this is going to be a uh, mo gold mo uh, motor cycle neck necklace. And uh, <clears throat> then we're going to create a, a PPE campaign to start with a page post engagement PPE. So I name it PPE. So we're going to do auction buying type and we're going to do traffic. We're going to do page post engagement. So that's called post engagement here. Click on post engagement and then we're going to, I, I basically copy this one store name and the name of the item here for, for now. Uh, we're going to create new ad sets and new, um, I call this one ad set and I call this one ad. I call it add one to so start with. Okay. I'm going to change the name here to this later, but uh, let's do this for now. So click create. So now it's going to create a campaign in, a, in draft. Um, yeah, in draft says, so it's not uploaded to Facebook yet. Nothing is live. It's just, so we have a campaign in draft created. To, when we want to upload it to Facebook, we click on this green button up here in the corner, which says review changes. And then we can review it and upload it to Facebook. That's the last step we're going to do. For now, we're just not going to do anything with the campaign name here. So we can see that we can edit the campaign name here if we want to. That's the only thing we can edit. We can set a limit to the campaign spending if we want to. I'm not going to do that either. And uh, let's go into next step, which is the ad set. <clears throat> so here we have the store name motorcycle that is selected right now. So that's the only one we can see since it is selected status on this little arrow here shows that this has uh, this has been saved and ready to be reviewed. So there has been some changes to this ad uh, set. That's just what it means. So all of these, all of the ones that has an arrow here in this column are basically the ones that are going to be uploaded um, next when you when you upload to Facebook. <clears throat> So let's click on edit for this one. We can click on edit here. Uh, and, or you can click on, on their little pen on the right hand side here. We're going to click on the edit pen, edit ad sets. It's going to pop up like this, pop out a little window here. So we have the name here. We're going to set the budget. Let's start the budget with a $5 a day. $5 a day uh, ad set budget. We can set this can set the schedule to start today. Right now, as you see, it's middle of the night here, 2.15, it sets, so you can launch it right away. I'm not, not gonna schedule an end date because I don't want the campaign to end. And if it takes off and do really well, then I want to run it continuously. So I don't wanna set an end date. We're not gonna use any custom audiences right now. We're just gonna go with the United States and uh, we start with this is a uh, women's necklace so let's go with women in the united states and we i'll go broad 18 to 65 first to see just to see what uh well look at the reports and see who are engaging so what you what some people do and, and when they're running ppe ads they, they run it worldwide to get uh, more cheaper clicks i don't like running it worldwide in the beginning because it doesn't make sense to me to to run run an ad to get likes from from other countries like india and, and uh, bangladesh and indonesia and other countries there where i'm not selling my items to i, I primarily sell to the united states and, and the f top five countries uh to top five english speaking countries i should say and then to western europe so i don't want to uh, if i if i get a lot of likes from other countries that are that i not sell to Facebook is going to pick up on those likes and use that in in the in the demo uh, in the with the with the pixel and when they're collecting data for the campaign. So if a lot of people clicking from those countries, it's going to 
basically take the demographic from those people that clicked <clears throat> and if they're not in the countries that I ship to currently that I want to sell to then they might not be very similar to the to the group that I want to promote to so I want I want to target people to click as well so I can look at the data and see who is actually liking these and what age group are they and, and uh, so on where do, do they live so that's why I don't choose worldwide for for this I, I could use more ta more countries but but we're gonna go with the United States right now but I only I, I will only choose countries that I actually intend to promote it to uh, language I'll leave that alone and then let's go into detail targeting so here we can let's see we can st let's start I, I always usually start by typing the broad interest so it's a motorcycle motorcycle motorcycles yeah 203 million people that's too too many people for me you can see when I hover over here I can see the sizes of the audiences uh, motorcycles they are too broad so I want to go with something that has uh, motorcycle racing that something under 20 million for sure that it, that I start out with otherwise there are too many people it's gonna be too broad of an audience I'm gonna do a flex intersect audience here right now so um, <clears throat> but but first it could I mean just to find other interests that are are related to motorcycle I can start with typing motorcycle and I can remove and I click select that just to see because then I will get suggestions from Facebook here it says suggestions so for other motorcycling Harley Davidson motorcycle club so this is how I find other interests that are related to what I actually that Facebook th thinks is relevant to what I'm promoting or what I'm already selected motorcycle club that could be a good one and uh, motorcycle racing motorcycle sport touring motorcycle sport bike mm, custom motorcycle shopper Kawasaki Honda Ducati so yeah let's let's uh, select motorcycle club that's two million people I'm gonna just remove motorcycles the ones from the from here from the US I'm gonna see what comes up so so motorcycle club in the US one one point four million people <clears throat> um, let's see so in this one I, I want to have the I want to get the art and audience uh, for a, for a PPE ad, you can have a broader audience than than a custom than a conversion ad. A conversion ad, I usually select 500,000 500, around my audience size. I let it go. I could let it go all the way down to two hundred between two hundred thousand and eight hundred thousand, but I wouldn't go beyond that. But for PPE ads, I can allow myself to go broader because uh, for a broader audience so Facebook, to give Facebook a little bit more people to choose from when they're gonna target target uh, my people but uh, so, but I, I'm gonna I can let myself go up to 5 million sometimes within the reach I look here in the reach on the right hand side here and uh, I can allow myself go up to 5 million people at most for a PPE ad but in th this case I think I want to go a little bit more targeted so I'm not gonna just I'm not just gonna add in a lot of motorcycle club interest here I'm gonna actually Stay, stick with this motorcycle club, but I'm gonna narrow it down actually a little bit I'm gonna try to get it to a, a million or a little bit maybe even lower than a million people To start with I think that will be enough anyway just <clears throat> because I want to target more targeted it doesn't I don't care For for to have a lot of people right now. I want to have it. I want so I'm gonna narrow it down so they must like they must be have an interest in a motorcycle club but they must also match the, one of the following interests so <clears throat> what I do in, in a case like this uh, <clears throat> I, I try to find I try to group the interest into different categories so motorcycle club is and that belongs to basically clubs and associations so that's one category and uh, then there are other categories like magazines for example that that is, that could be a really good or communities or websites or or uh, famous uh, uh, famous uh, celebrities within the niche and so on so uh, I group the interest so I, I'm gonna add one group of interest in into each of these boxes in the targeting boxes there. so in this one I have motorcycle club so in this one here I'm gonna have another group of interests related to motorcycle so 
for example, websites. So you can see here already have women motorcyclist.com is 200,000. That's biker or not.com 530,000. That could be good. Bikers post is also a website. So maybe I should try to try to group together websites here. Women motorcyclist that could be good. Biker or not, five hundred thirty thousand. Then uh, shopper exchange, biker post. Okay, so leatherup.com. Maybe that's this website. So I get up to hundred thousand people when I combine the motorcycle club with a biker with a website. So maybe I need to to add something more here. So maybe I should try magazines as well. So we have. Here we have Hot Bike Magazine, Easy Rider Magazine. They have a, they're a little bit larger inside a million people for that one. Motorcyclist Magazine, Biker Clothing Company, Baggers Ma Rider Magazine. So let's try Hot Bike Magazine, Motorcyclist Magazine, Easy Rider Magazine. Hmm, are these for other motorcycle news? Easy Riders Magazine. Um, let's see, Fast Bikers Magazine, Sport Rider Magazine, Super Bike Magazine. So we only we still we're stuck at one hundred ten thousand people here right now <clears throat> that are actually that we can reach with this in the United States, and we've added a lot of interest here, magazines and and. Uh, websites so maybe the bikers code okay so maybe we should add something more also uh, other than motorcycle club maybe we can also here add some some brands so for example so the 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 uh, motorcycle necklace was a sports motorcycle right auto bike so it's a sports motorcycle so maybe not a harley would be maybe Harley might not be the best group to target for the uh, for a piece of jewelry like this because it's not something that's even closely related to Harley I, I would think that's just my opinion so maybe but maybe motorcycle racing or motorcycle tour uh, maybe a sports bike could be something Let's see, sports bike and women. We're only targeting women now, so that's why it's such a small audience. Women compared, I mean, there are a lot more men in this in this uh, in this uh, niche, I would think. But let's see, we can find. Uh, so Kawasaki motorcycles. Let's see what we can find. We can find Honda motorcycles, Yamaha. All right, touring motorcycle. So now we're up to 150,000. Okay, sport touring motorcycle. So I want to get it, get the women up here. Motorcycle sport, motorcycle racing, motorcycle sport, motorcycle racing. 12 million people. Hmm. <clears throat> but not a lot of women. It's uh, mostly men. Well, in combination with the other one that that is. So maybe Ducati. I don't know. Maybe that's a brand. I'm, I'm gonna. I can, I'm gonna. Motorcycles. That's the big one. Custom motorcycle. Triumph motorcycles. Maybe I should also add in Harley Davidson just to to have a group of. But so now okay Harley three hundred ninety thousand people. Ducati. No, it didn't change anything. Okay, so anyway, well, let's see. We can find Cycle World Magazine, by, uh, Udo. Uh, there's not a lot of street bike, super street bike. That sounds like a biker magazine, by a biker thing, American super bikes. That could be something. Okay, so we're at 400,000. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop right there, but I think you get the point. But 
uh, if I could have, I would have gotten it up to a million people. But I want to have two layers because that's going to make my audience much more targeted than if I only added a lot of motorcycle interest to here. Because this includes the people who matches who match at least one of the following. That's what it says here. So one of the brands or, or the motorcycle club, motorcycle racing, motorcycle sports. But also, they must also like a magazine or, or one of the websites here, the biker or not. Or something like that so a combination of these two makes it the audience much more targeted that's that's the power here uh, so we're gonna leave it at those two and then I'm gonna go into placement I'm gonna go and show how I set it up here so I always start with mobile only to, when I start promoting something new so I go to mobile only because all, most of the traffic is gonna be mobile for you I unselect Instagram I don't want to promote to Instagram I do not want to promote into audience network. See the audience now shrunk to 220,000 people. Well, that's fine. We're gonna keep it at that for now. And then I'm gonna remove in-stream videos and I'm gonna remove instant articles. So 220,000 people. And we are targeting going for post engagement. So <clears throat> let's hope we can get a lot of post engagement. We can. If we want to, we can extend it to other countries to get to get a higher reach for the five dollar. For five dollars, we're only going to reach four hundred to eighteen hundred people, which is fine. So we can't expect a thousand likes right away from from um, this type of reach. If we're targeting a lot of different countries with the PPE, yeah, yeah, then we can get a lot of more likes too. But uh, for cheaper, but but maybe that's not what we want. I mean, if the goal is just to get the likes up then to get the social proof yeah that could be a good idea but if we want to also want to build a look at our data then we, can, we don't want to target every country we just want to target the countries where we are gonna sell which we're gonna sell to which we intend to sell to so we'll leave the bid amount to automatic and we're gonna leave everything else uh, as it is and then we're gonna go into the ad <clears throat> All right, so here we have the ad. Well, um, well, let's go back first to set. The, for, I also changed the the ad set name here accordingly. So I I would change this to mobile, set it to mobile in the age range and what I'm targeting. And yeah, let's do that. So let's go in and edit the ad set again. Go back to just to because I forgot to set the name. So for this one, uh, motorcycle necklace, I would actually add in uh, uh, female. 18 to 65 mobile and I'm targeting um, US and also I'm targeting uh, uh, clubs clubs and uh, mag scenes Clubs and magazines, basically. That's uh, clubs, magazines, and and uh, what else? Yeah, tar magazines and um, websites. So it's an in the plus means that it, um, to me it means that, that it's intersect with clubs and magazines and websites that I'm intersecting. Anyway, so that's the how basically a, a simple way to explain how I name my ad sets. So. Let's leave it at that. Let's go into the ads. Click on edit for the ad that is selected. And uh, then the first I can change the ad name. And then I need to change the destination page, the page that I'm going to promote to. So I have a fan page that's called uh, bikers. I used to have a fan page that's called bikers. Hmm, let's go back see. I thought I had one. Where was that one? Okay. Okay, we're not gonna use the, that page right now. So we'll we'll use another page. I don't know what happened with that page. But um, let's use this one, Wall Art Design Store, just for now. Because for purpose of showing, I'm gonna promote a bike bikers product here. So we're gonna create first. We're gonna there are two ways we can create the ad here. We can create by click on create ad. We can. I'm going to show you what what we can do then. Click on create ad and uh, 
add canvas. Okay, we can, we're not going to do a canvas here. We can we can do an image add. Let's see if we can select it. Yeah. So if we want to select an image, this is going to be a page a post engagement ad. So that, okay, that's why why we're not we can't we don't have an option for video and other things here. I understand. Um, okay, never mind. Let's. I'm going to show you this for the next one we're going to create. We're going to start with use existing post for now. So start with use existing post and we're going to use it. If we have a post already, we can select it from here, from the drop down. Or here we have uh, something. Let's see. There are some ads here already, old ads. We're not going to use those, but we can if we want to. Instead, we're going to create a new page post ad right now. And um, I'm going to show you how to write this ad, for this product, and um, uh, as a as a dark. What we're doing right now, we we are going to create it as a dark post. So we can either select an image photo here by clicking on the little icon on the left here, and then just upload the image, basically. Or we can. Uh, Click on uh, photo video here, and uh, that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to click on create. We're going to create a sl video, a slideshow video. So we're going to create a video ad post. Then if we click on select slideshow, what, what we can do is create a video, run a video ad, even though we don't have a video of the product. We can create a slideshow video of it, which can be good. So this will work basically like a video ad instead of a, an image ad. And I'm going to add in some images here uh, to this one. So let me come back to this uh, shortly. OK, the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to add in the images that I want to use for the slideshow. So I click on the plus button here at the bottom. And it gives me the option to choose images that I already have here, or I can take a photo or upload a photo. So let's just upload some photos. And I have the photos here. Uh, let's let's select all of them here. The ones that I gotten from of that motorcycle necklace. So, so now I selected one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, photos. So it's good to have multiple, um, and different types of photos of the same product. That and uh, then I can select aspect ratio here. I want to select if it's possible. I want to select square because that's better for mobile. It gives better impressions because mobile views the video on in the square. The image duration I select usually to three seconds at least. So I, I get a video length of uh, over 15 seconds. That's what I want, at least 15 seconds video. So here you can see this is 18 seconds right now. Uh, transition fade, that's good. And then I can also select a music tune here that is um, basically royalty free. So you don't have to pay anything or you can use it for free as much as any. Um, so let's select something here that could be good for for bikers, I don't know what could be good for bikers. Uh, time lapse, let's, no. This one, longboard. Let's use this. Okay, and then you can see the pl uh, slideshow playing here. Okay, so that's that's how the video plays. You have the slideshow. You can actually drag the images here in whatever order you want them. And when you're done, you just click Create Slideshow, and you will have a slideshow here that, uh, ready for you to use. And then we need to say something about the slideshow. So we can just start with a question. Love this uh, motor. Love motorcycle. Let's say love motor cycle. Love motorcycles. This uh, biker, this uh, be beautiful, beautiful um, uh, gold necklace is. Right now, now fifty percent off. 
or is 50% off today. And then let's say a new line and say grab yours here. Then I would post, post link HTTP store name dot com slash product slash well whatever link whatever your link is for the and then I would add a as a last call to action uh, grab your series as a call to action but also as another call to action I want them to comment and like and share as well so um, comment yes below uh, below and share this with a biker friend who would love this something like that so basically what I do here is basically tell them what I want them to do I tell them that I want I command give them a command that I want them to comment below and I also want them to share this post so comment and share um, and uh, also I want them to grab so people always respond better when you tell them what to do so if you tell them to click uh, comment and, and share it more people will do it than if you don't tell them so that's always a call to action I have at the end of my my ads in, a, in one way or another then I click on save and publish post we have the option here to actually publish as well if you want to but we don't want to do that then it will be visible on the fan page if we click on save unpublished post it's going to be a dark post so nobody's going to see it when we go to the page we can save it and it will be uh, saved um, this one is uh, when we click on save for the post it will actually be saved uh, for that page as a, um, even though the ad is not going live the post will in itself will be saved on the on the fan page so first you might get an error here when you create a post like that because it will take like 30 seconds for Facebook to create that slice of video uh, and render that for you. So while we're waiting for that, well, we also want to select here that we want to track conversions from the Facebook pixel. So select that down here and then we have the pixels choose what pixel you want to use. And then after all well, we waited 30 seconds, we want to see we, we it should it just doesn't show up here yet in the list so what we can do we can go up to the menu here to the power editor and we can click on uh, let's see what we can click on page posts here we have page posts uh, we can open that up so let's go and open that up here so we have page posts here here are a lot of pages that I have here and uh, this one here wall art design story was the one that we're gonna use and uh, I'm gonna re refresh this page post here to see we have scheduled posts we have published posts and we have ads posts here in the page post uh, uh, part of the section okay here is the one I just created so uh, May 26 so yeah, as you see here uh, this one should be the, ch the last one sh should show up at the top and it has an ID number here so what we can do is we can select this ID number here. When we select it, it's gonna pop up as an open up though. So I selected it and then it opened up. You can see that it is, this is the video that I just created. And um, then we have the post here. So this is okay and this is good, all right. Um, but I'm not gonna edit anything or do it. You can edit it from here if you want to. Click here in the top here, click on edit post. Uh, but uh, we're not gonna do that, so. Uh, we're gonna close this down right now here but it could be good to, for you to know if you want to edit it later you can edit the text you can never edit the video again but uh, and you have to recreate it so what we want to do as like I said we want to copy the ID number here and close this down and just click uh, control C on a PC or command C on a Mac to copy this number and then we want to go back to the power editor again so we were here in the power editor so here it says enter post ID here. So I click on enter post ID and I paste that number and click submit. 
Let's see what happens. If something happens, it should load that page post. Uh, this is, see, this is the same number. Sometimes you might need to refresh. I don't know. Maybe that's what we need to do right now. I'm going to refresh the page here. Seems to get stuck, be stuck here. So we we'll refresh and see what is happening. Takes a little bit to load. Uh, one, two. Okay, it's loading, loading, loading. Love motorcycles is there. All right, there it goes. So here you can see a preview of the ad. What it will look like on a mobile newsfeed, actually, or on desktop too, if you choose that. But um, yeah, so this is what it will look like. Love motorcycles, and you can also. I would recommend that you use em emoticons, emojis. Uh, here in the in the ad copy as well because that is helping to en engage people you get create more evoke more emotions so if you don't know how to add in emojis here go to google and search for emojis facebook and then there you get to some sites there that you, where you can basically copy and paste and paste emojis into the post when you're creating it so this is a video post and now we can use this to advertise this is a dark post so it won't show up on the page if we try to go to the page um in facebook uh let's go into the fa uh, let's go and see if we can find that wall art design store here we have it so here uh it will not show up this is another ad that i created a long time ago so it will not show up here because it's a dark post if i would have created it from here i can also click here to basically create uh, click and share a photo or video for example and then I can create a slideshow from here in the same way. And then if I click on publish here, then it will be created as a visible post and it cannot be hidden later on. So that's a, basically a dark post is hidden. So if I create many, many, a lot of ads, I don't want to spam the wall here. And that's why they have created, they have the feature of dark posts. They have the, all the ads posts can be dark posts if you want to. So they are hidden. If you make them, if you choose, you can make, choose to make them visible. Um, but then you can never hide them again. So then they will be visible until you either delete them or, or will, they will stay there visible. That's what I wanted to go over with the with the creating ads. And uh, we can also create a an image ad. I'm going to show you that shortly as well. So uh, let me let me. Uh, Pause the video right now. I'm going to get back to you in just a second, and we're going to continue with the uh, duplication of the ad set as well. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, I'm back. I just had to grab some water. So, uh, what we want to do right now? Then uh, we've created a video ad. Uh, let's go and see. Um, what we did. We created. We have been going over the ads manager versus the power editor. We have created a campaign, an ad set, and then an ad. And we have uh, created a video ad. And we've also talked about dark posts versus visible posts. <clears throat> so what we're going to do right now, um, we're gonna also, I'm also going to talk a little bit about an image ad and uh, <clears throat> the difference between two, two, a post ad and, a, and, a, and an image ad. And uh, also going to duplicate the campaign and show how to duplicate this P uh, PPE campaign into Let's see. Uh, duplicate PPE campaign to website conversion campaign. That's what, that's what we want to do. So that's what we're going to go into and do right now. <clears throat> so let's go back into into this here, and we're going to go and look at the. Um, Ad set because that's what we want to duplicate. So, well, we could go here to the campaign and, and start duplicating that because uh, we want to duplicate it into a website conversion campaign. And like I said in the beginning, we cannot have a PPE campaign, a PPE and, and website conversion in the same campaign. So we need to have two different campaigns for this. The website conversion campaign though, 
we wanna we can if we if we cut if we just duplicate the PPE campaign, it's gonna be uh, uh, create a new PPE campaign, and we can't change the the objective of a campaign once it is created. So we will need we wanna create um, a new uh, website conversion campaign, but we still wanna duplicate the ad set from the PPE campaign into the new one. So that's what we're gonna do here. So let's um, I'm gonna click on the ad set. Uh, we have we have the ad set name here. The campaign is selected. So, oh, no, sorry, the ad set is selected, and I'm gonna click on duplicate. So then we get the option to we can add this du duplicate ad set to the original campaign, or we can add it to an existing campaign, or we can create a new campaign. So, like I said, if we if we choose to to add it to the original campaign, then it's gonna be another PPE ad set. So that's not what we want. We want to create and add it into a new campaign because we don't have a we don't have an existing campaign yet. So if I click on existing campaign, I get I um, I can type in this campaign name here if I want to in the list, and it will have a, a list of campaign uh, the campaigns that I have, so I can select the one I want. But now we're going to create a new campaign. So I'm going to call this uh, store name uh, motor. motorcycle necklace and I'm gonna name it WC for website conversion so now we're gonna set the objective for this one to conversions <clears throat> and then uh, we're gonna do one duplicate and the copy the all the statuses will be the same as the one I'm duplicating so which means that if the ads are on for the the, the original one the ads gonna be on for the new one uh, all of them will be active actually when I when I launched them, that is. So now we have created an, a new one here. Uh, so the new one is actually the one selected here. So I'm gonna right away, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. This is a website conversion campaign. So I'm gonna name this one WC so that I know it's usually named copy in the beginning here. I'm changing it to WC for website conversion so I know which one is which. And then I need to choose a conversion event. So I can either choose the view contents add to cart or purchase, depending on how many sales I've had before on my pixel. Um, if I had a lot of sales already, I could, from another of other products, in this, in, uh, then I would maybe add the purchase as the objective. But since I'm starting out right now new, I start with view content as, the, as my objective. That's what I'm gonna start. So that means that I want Facebook, Facebook, want Facebook to optimize the ad for for, for people that will come and view my content. But basically, they, I want them to click on the link. They optimize for people that click on the link on my ad to come and view them. I'm everything else is gonna be the same here from the one I duplicated. So we have the same audience here, US women. We have the Harley Davidson and, and the motorcycles and the biker pages and the magazines. Everything is the same. Oh, one more thing, actually. We wanna uncheck, I wa always uncheck this one, expand interest when it may increase conversion at lower cost per conversion. I don't trust Facebook with this one, so I usually uncheck this always. <clears throat> uh, oh, we got a sale. <sighs> All right. Um, so I uncheck this because, um, yeah, um, I don't trust Facebook uh, that they will do a good job. I, don't, I, 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 I wanna keep control over who they're, what groups they are targeting are showing my ad to basically that's that's what I want so I'm keeping this to mobile only to to mobile newsfeed only but here we want to change the optimization for ad delivery now because this is not a PPE ad anymore the new one is the, this ad set is a conversion ad so we want to optimize for conversion as well so we want to select the conversion here and we can select conversion window seven day click or one day click I usually recommend people to leave it at seven day click in the beginning. You can play around with it and try one day click too. But, uh, and you can read about how that works in, if you go into um, to the help section here, conversion window here, it's, it's read, it says a little bit about how that works. But um, basically Facebook looks back on this last seven days and, um, and try to find people that will purchase within seven days of seeing the ad. Um, okay, I'll leave this the way it is. Uh, otherwise, so those are the only things I change with the pixel and the, the, the optimization. And then I go into the ad. 
So the first one, now we see the ad has been, now we have two different data as they are connected, each one are connected to one, to one ad set, but they're both targeting the same post. So if I click on this one that is selected, you can see this is the, this is the post we did here. So if I, so if I want to change this, for example, let's say I want to do an image ad of this, image ad for this one, then I need to, for the second one, here we have an image ad. Uh, then I need to change this. Uh, I can either create an image ad here by click create new page post. That will create an image post instead of a video. Uh, because and, and might want to do that because image ads and video ads can perform differently. So I'm, I might want to test that. So that could be a reason why I want to do that. Uh, image ad, uh, video ads are not always better than images. Images can perform better even if it's the same one. And uh, there are difference, other differences too but I'm not going to go into detail on those right now. Uh, another way we can create an image ad is we click on create ad here. Now we can see here that we have ad with an image or video here, but I rarely use this one though, but this is something that you can use. I'm going to show, actually show the difference right now, what we're doing uh, with it, with it, with this type of image ad here and with the other one as a post, this is an image ad. I will have a button under it so and some text under it so what we can do is we can here click on click here on image and select image and it will pop up a, a little window here with the saved images that we have in an image library on Facebook but also we can choose to upload an image if we want to another option here though is that the, this is pretty new new feature that you can use stock images if we click on stock images, you can actually search and use uh, images. You see, I powered by Shutterstock. Shutterstock is one of the largest uh, royalty-free, no, not royalty-free, but largest uh, 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 licensed uh, places for for stock images. Um, so if you go to Shutterstock.com, you can search all millions and millions of pictures and find find ones that you want to use and you pay a small royal um, royal license fee for the, to use them basically on your websites and, and that but but here Facebook have basically teamed up with Shutterstock so that so that you can use their stock images for free in your ads so let's let's just try this now if obviously you're not going to advertise be able to find the product that you're going to advertise but this could be good anyway if you want to find uh, uh, if you had, have want to get creative and, and uh, get people to click on your ad from a based on the other type of image, basically. So let's type motorcycle, motorcycle. See what comes up. And here we have a lot of images. You can see them. There are some cool images here that we might be able to use. I mean, to to get people to click. Do you think people that like like motorcycles will click on this ad? <clears throat> so this one for example it's this is cool too but uh, there are a lot of cool cool images here uh, so select one that stands out and I select this one for example I click on confirm to see if then we'll get a preview of the, what the ad would look like uh, and it doesn't have the watermark so this is what it will look like uh, and then you can have a headline here and a little description and you type the headline here, the URL, the URL goes here and uh, oh, and you, oh, well you add the link here what, where, where do you want to take them uh, in the URL box here to, the, to your store and then you can basically type something love now display link click here and uh, the text the headline here uh, let's say love motorcycles question mark click here to Oh, no, not click here, let's say. Uh, our new golden motor 
this. So necklace is necklace is fifty percent off today. Click here to get yours. So now, yeah. That's basically how we can show it in Newble. Uh, you can see what it fits on here, and then we can add a button here if we want to, like shop now or 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 something like that, or shop now if we want to. So you see the difference here. Th this type of image uh, add the the image is a little bit cropped or the smaller, not as high, has not, doesn't have the same height as normal posts in the newsfeed. And it has the little shop button now button here and so on. So these images can work well in some cases, but it also um, doesn't get as much engagement as a, a regular post. So if, when we do the dark post, like I showed you before, by, by creating a dark post and with an image or, or a slideshow, then we will get more engagement usually on the ad. But this case can work really well too, because when people click on the image here, they will be taken directly to your to the product page and they can see the see the motorcycle necklace even though it's not shown here in the image you can have an image that really grabs people's attention and then and get them to and then a little text to get that get them to click uh, that could be good or you can use your own image your own image too I mean here if you want to you can just upload it here and add it and add it um, but that this is a different type of image ad than the post post ad that we created before so basically it says we share the link says here too. So that's what it, what it says in, the, in this type of ad. So it's, it's not a, a regular post. <clears throat> I hope that makes sense. So keep this in mind how this one looks. Let's, 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 see, let's say we want to change the image to the actual necklace. So we can upload the image here too. And uh, uh, let's say we want to upload the this one. Let's see what how that goes. Okay, confirm to use that one. This will update, so now it will look like this. Okay, we can use this one too because this is pretty good. So this is how it looks with the shop now button and the link below here and so on. <clears throat> but the other way to do it, like I said, doing the dark post, we click on use existing post instead. And then we can, if we want to do an image ad instead of this video, we click here, create post. And uh, we click here on the little icon here, add photos to your post. And we select, well, you can also create a slideshow from here. That's actually new. And we select upload photos or video, and then we can upload the same photo here. Take that same photo and it will show up here. We only want to select one, fo one photo here. Otherwise it's going to create a, let, let the user swipe and so on. It can create a carousel or whatever. We don't, we only want a one anyway for, for the ad. Uh, well, maybe you can use two, I have, and I can get that to work better too. I haven't actually used two in a long time, or more than one. And then you basically type the same copy here. You can take the same one here that we have for the video, just type in the same, love motorcycles, and, that, and all that. And then you can save it as an unpublished post, and then we have it. I'm not going to type it all right now. I'm just going to save it as an unpublished post, and you will see what it looks like here. So that will actually show up right away here. Yeah. So the difference here, this doesn't have the button below here, the image, and uh, you have the text above here, and uh, you don't have a link URL. So this looks more like a post. The other one, remember, it looks like it said the Wall Art Design Store shared a link. That's what it said up here. But uh, now it just said sponsored and um, love motorcycles, and then we add in the, the other text that I didn't add for this one, but should be the same text that we have for the for this one so i hope this makes sense to you if, if there was something that was confusing to you go back and watch it again watch it a few times and uh, feel free to ask me questions if you want to that was all that i wanted to go over we have been uh, the, a little bit more than an hour worth of training today and um, yeah so that's, that was all that i wanted to show you uh, today how to 
let's repeat what we've been going we've been, we've been talking about the ads manager versus the power editor that it is actually i use the ads manager to watch my reports for my ads and then uh, the power editor i use to duplicate ads to create ads because it's easy to make changes to multiple ads and and so on at the same time and you can duplicate and and uh, do a lot of creative things with it and then uh, i showed you how to create a campaign the ad set and the ad and uh, talked about image ads now just now and then page post ads the differences between image ad and the page post ad and also showed you how to create a video ad out of the slideshow if you only have images if you don't have a video <clears throat> you can still create a video ad and uh, I talked about dark posts versus visible posts and uh, yeah I showed you how to duplicate a PPE campaign into a website conversion campaign so that's uh, all the training I had for you today and uh, day 56 so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're having a great day and if you have any feedback you can comment on this uh, video below here and I will check back in at times and, and respond and you can tag me too if uh, you have a specific question so that I get noticed notified um, and uh, I'll get back to an answer to answer it if it's not too difficult okay hope you're having a great day and uh, take care and see you again soon